Hey there, creative folks. Today, I'm super excited to walk you through the magic of using the procedural level generator plugin for top-down games, particularly those awesome strategy ones. I've got these super simple meshes that are like the building blocks of our game world. They're basic, sure, but guess what? They're also the secret sauce to creating any map layout you can dream of. So if you're itching to craft maps that'll make your players go, wow, take a peek at how these meshes are put together and the different faces they have. Then you can jazz them up with your own artistic flair. All right, let's dive in. First things first, we're going to whip up a collection. If you've been following my previous videos, you'll feel right at home with the setup options. My meshes, they're square as a box and their pivot point is smack dab in the center. Trust me, it's a performance lifesaver. If your model's pivot is not at center, just switch to custom. And oh, all my meshes start with SM underscore terrain underscore. It's like their family name. Now that we've got the basics down, let's add some spice to our collection. I'm picking the flat ground as the first and default option. After that, it's a free for all. Grab other meshes from the content browser or straight from the level and pop them into the collection like toppings on a pizza. Socket time. If you're new to this, finding the right socket count might feel like solving a Rubik's cube, but don't sweat it. After a bit of trial and error, you'll be a socket counting ninja. Here's a pro tip. In your mind, chop up your meshes into chunks and see which ones got the most pieces. Since most modular meshes share a design DNA, it's not as tough as it sounds. For this mesh, I'm betting it's a piece of cake to split it into three sections. You can practically see the lines. Setting up sockets for our ground mesh is a breeze. I'm just going to tag the default name as ground and give the rotate option a rest since all sides are twinsies. I'll bump up the weight a tad because who doesn't love more flat ground in their map? Next up, we've got a mesh that's playing dress up as ground because of its color. But nope, it's got cliff ambitions with those extra faces. Let's bookmark this one for now and scout for a mesh that screams cliff from a mile away. Aha, found one. This mesh is like a double agent top and bottom pass as ground, which is spot on. Socket underscore one will join the ground gang since it's half earthy goodness and socket underscore two is the cliffhanger we've been hunting for. Now we can pair this cliff socket with our earlier mesh. See that bit of flat face? It's perfect for a ground connection, so no changes needed there. The spotlight's now on 3D meshes. Hit the 3D icon and watch a new section unfold, showing off all the faces of your mesh. Clearly, from the south, it has the full face. If collection could not correctly scan your mesh, you can toggle faces from this section. Our next mesh is like the previous one's twin, with ground sockets ready to mingle with any flat ground mesh. But we've got to manually add the cliff socket on the east side. The west side's playing it cool with no extra faces, so no cliff socket or ground connection there as it's not flat. Time to roll up our sleeves and craft a ramp socket from scratch. Don't forget to switch on 3D and do a face check. We're looking at a mesh that's a dead ringer for the one we just worked on with no extra faces on the west or east sides. So we're sticking with our ramp socket and flipping on the 3D switch and everything checks out with only the south face showing in the viewport. Remember our cliff-seeking mesh? We've already set its sockets, 
So now it's just a matter of bringing it to life in 3D. Moving on to another mesh, we've got a socket underscore three, that's half ground, half cliff. It's like a landscape mullet, and we're going to merge it right into the ground. Once we enable 3D, suddenly we see two faces as the south and west sides. And here we go again, another option with the same socket underscore three situation. It's deja vu and we're merging to ground once more as it can connect to any ground socket. Flip the 3D switch and like a good detective, it reveals two faces on the south and west sides. Now for our grand finale option, all the sockets are looking sharp, but it's not showing any full faces. It's a bit of a tease with the south and west sides partially covered, but we'll keep the 3D dream alive. It's showtime. Let's toss this collection into the generator and see what magic unfolds. And it's not quite the masterpiece we envisioned. Some faces are playing hide and seek. Why this ramp is connected to a ground mesh? So let's check sockets. Aha, we've got a ramp masquerading as flat ground. Time for a change and set those sockets to ramp and let's roll the dice on another map. Bingo, that tweak did the trick and our map looks like real map, no misfit meshes in sight. But wait, there's more we can do to elevate our creation. For instance, we don't want ramp with Cliff's twins next to each other. That's a no-go. So let's introduce a self-check to keep them at a friendly distance. Also, I don't want this one-sided cliff ramp to be next to the two-sided cliff ramp. And those small holes in the map, they're begging for a self-check too, or maybe we can play around with the max series option to keep our ramps from getting too chummy. All these tweaks are like spices in a recipe. It's all up to your taste. And with that, our video is a wrap. Thanks for hanging out. And if you've got questions, drop them in the comments.